This is code.org. I'm currently working on their CS Discovery scores. I'm on Unit 3, Animation and Games, Lesson 13, Other Forms of Input, Part 7. Let's see what we're doing. Ooh, we have code here. I'm going to go ahead and run it and see. Ooh, we have a, ooh, we have a crazy bee, or two, or three. Oh, I think this is a swarm from last time, maybe? Oh, no, it's new code. Anyways, all right, let's hit reset. So, when to provide a fallback. The else clause is useful. If you don't know what else is, go do the last part of this level, uh, lesson. And the else clause is useful as a fallback to the main condition that you're checking. That is, and condition is the if statement, right? If else. That is, if you care what happens when your primary, when your first condition is false, you should provide an else clause to take care of it. Do this. Click run to see, and we already did, uh, to see the swarm of bees, the swarm of bees created from, from you and a flower on the left side of the screen. Make the swarm of bees appear when the mouse is near the flower. Oh, does it appear always? Yep on the left side of the screen and disappear when the mouse is away. So is that, oh, I see what they're doing. On the right side of the screen, look at the example I did. Add an else statement after you update the position of the bees. If the input of, okay, wait, I'm gonna do this as they're telling me because otherwise I'll forget. Let's shrink this up. Oh my goodness, this code is long. Okay, can I, nope, all right. So we need to add an else statement, but we don't have an if statement. All right. Oh, add an if else statement after you update the position. So after I update this position, okay, I need my control. I need my if, or I can just grab my if else, drop that in. All right. If I want to get rid of else, bye, plus, but we want the else. After you update the position, in the input of the if, use a boolean. Wait a minute. What's a boolean? That's, boolean means true or false. Boolean is one of those checkers. The checkers. We use a math thing. Here, I'll show you. To check if the X position of the mouse is on the side of the screen with the flower. Ooh. All right. So we want to check if the mouse position is on the side with the flower. So let's see how we can do that. What side is that? So... I'm going to show my grid. I'm going to expand this again just so we can see it. All right, the side with the flower looks to be the left side. Let's go from the dead center here, okay? And so what is X at this point? It's 200 roughly, right? And if I move over, X is decreasing. So I think that would mean if X is 0 to 200 is this size. We don't really care about Y because Y is up and down. So, yep. About 0 to 200. Okay. So, in our if statement, like it says here, we want to use that scary word, a boolean, to check. And this is a boolean, any of these math things. So, if... Yep, I'm going to use this one. So, oop, where did our if statement go? Drop that in there. We want to use... What we care about is mouse... X. Wait, let me double check. Yeah, we're checking if it's on the side of the screen with the flower. Set the visible property of each B inside both the if and the else statement appropriately. So if it's on the side of the flower, and that would mean it is less than 200, our mouse X, our mouse's X position is less than 200. So the computer will then say, okay, is the mouse less than 200 X? If so, we want to set, where is the visible property? Here. We want to set the visible property appropriately. Ooh, what's appropriately? We can set it to, oh, okay. Visible as false will make them disappear, I guess, or visible set to true. We can do that. So let's go to back to variables. Yep. How many Bs do we have? One, two, three. Got it. And then I'm going to need these for the else statement. I can already tell. And then the property we want is visible. Boop.
Okay, and remember our sprite variables are b1, b2, b3. So we need to change this from sprite to b1, b2. And this is a good time to remind you that we can never have a number at the start of a variable. We can have numbers in a variable, but never start with a number. b2, b3. Okay, so if it is on the left side, if it's near the flower, I think we're going to want it to be true. And then I'm going to write the word true. And then I'm going to write the word unless did they have, I'm wondering if they wanted me to grab something that says true. Nope. Okay, good. We can just write it. And I probably have already made a mistake. The great thing about code is you're allowed to make mistakes. So if it is on the wrong side, I'm setting this to false. And that's because if it's on the other side, if X is not less than 200, meaning your mouse is over here, we want our swarm of bees to disappear. Let's see if I did something right. Whoop. Bye. See, near flower, near flower, not near flower. I can disappear this grid. Hurrah. Let's see if that's it. Set the visible property of each inside the if and the else statement appropriately. Yeah, I think we then um got it. Let me just show you that full code over here. So what I did, I left all of this, right? I just added the if and I added this stuff to it. Awesome. This stuff is getting tougher. I kind of love it. Let's keep uh, going. 